my final version modification to this board. I've used a 10k pull up arrays on each of these, these are both uh, 7 bit arrays I suppose, 8 pins only. So I've cut the 9 pin down and down, apart from this one here, that's using all 9. I've run a wire here from that pin of the collector of that particular device, Q5 I think it was, up to the spare pin up here. So that's acting as a pull up for this transistor. This is acting as pull ups, it's been modified, so this is linking the pull up. So the trace comes around here, up to here, and you can see I put a bridge in there. So I've cut the track just there, where it links onto the other array. Right in that corner I've cut the track. And I put a link there onto that pad, basically I put a little link through that pad there and folded it over. Now that pad on the other side here goes to the 5 up rail. So that makes that array then pulling up. These arrays need to pull down, so this is pulling up for the segments, these are pulling down for the digits. So as per original, they can stay on the original track. What I've had to do though is I've pulled out the Zener diode that was here, the resistor that was here. And I put a link across the back, right there. So those three pads vertically are joined together, so those are all ground. That then supplies a ground up here to this resistor array. Okay, so all those, all those pads need to be grounded. So the original link to stay in place is to join between that link there, which was the minus 175 volt rail, up to the ground rail, which is up here. And linking to the middle one links it to where the diode was originally. I've changed all these resistors here to 150 ohms. I've taken these capacitors out and put links in. I've taken these resistors out and put diodes in, apart from R20, R37, R34. These have got wire links, so the diode shouldn't actually be there, there should be wire links there only. And I also upgraded this capacitor here, it was a 250 volt cap originally, because there's no longer high voltage on this board, so I disabled the link. I took away the minus 170 volt rail, which is over here, on the other half of the board, on the other side rail, same position. Lifting that link, it was link 1, link 2 I think it was. So then I could use a low voltage capacitor here, and this is basically across the 0 volt rail now, because it used to go to 5 volt and minus 175 volt, because that's now a negative rail, the 0 volt rail instead of minus 175. I've changed it to a 16 volt cat 330 microfarad instead of a 10 microfarad high voltage. This helps reinforce the power supply on this board a little bit, because it has a bit more current being drawn from the LED display. And I think that's all the modifications. It's been a lot of work. As you can see, I'm printing these enunciators again. What I've done is done a translucent layer first, which has the text in it, and then I'm doing the top layers, as you can see, as black. So what this should actually do is give me the required outcome with the visible text, without having to do any painting, and actually have the text visible and hopefully light up nicely. So as long as the accuracy and all this is good, it should work. So because I've done basically solid and then recess the text and then change the filament once it starts doing the recess text, it should be able to build the text up on top of the base layer of the transparent. So therefore you can get all the bits inside the characters you know, which you normally wouldn't get if you did a stencil kind of thing. This should work. As you can see, it appears to be working. This is the first time I've done it this way. So a bit of a learning experience. A little bit of messing around, you know, changing filaments halfway through, that sort of stuff. but. It's not that big a deal, and it might give a really good outcome. We'll find out in the end. As you can see, so far it's not looking too bad. There you go, that's what it's like from the front view. That looks pretty damn good, actually. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that so far. Hopefully it comes out like that in the end. That looks pretty good. Oh, look, it's just finishing. There we go. That's what the enunciators look like. That's pretty good. That's way better than my first attempt. So now I'm making some new enunciators for the uh, polarity sign. So I've done a outer piece already, which you can't really see because I'm not in focus. That's a different version to what I had before, which was like this. And now I'm doing the actual transparent section. And that basically forms the minus and the plus symbol for the voltage or whatever, you know. This is almost finished printing. As you can see, my cat is bored with waiting. Now the printer's finished, the cat is woken up. and He's gone back to sleep again already. My cat is unimpressed by the print quality. Alright, so now I've done all the display stuff. That's finished. I've done new enunciators for it. That is all finished and done. I'm going to show you what it's doing now. I started recapping it. I've recapped the power supply section in the back here. All that is done. I've actually disabled some of the power supply. The original minus 175 volt supply, which only ran the display. I've actually dismantled that section so there's no transistors in there. The bridge rectifier I've taken out. These bridge rectifiers are a bit flaky and they can blow. When they blow, they short out the transformer and blow the transformer up. So 
having that taken out is a good thing. It's one less likely thing to go wrong. So I've taken all that part out. It doesn't need it anyway. The display's gone, so it's completely irrelevant. No, I've got like the bits here, heat sink here, the transistor on it. Um, there's a bridge rectifier. There's the other transistor, which is on the other heat sink next to it. And the actual interesting thing about this as well, that, that second transistor, this is the washer from it. See, it's a really dark yellow. And here is the bolt that was holding it on. It's a, uh, it's just about, got a bit hot. <laughs> See the colouring changing there? I grabbed hold of the nut to try and undo it and it just fractured and broke apart. So that was in of its days anyway. It's lucky it didn't really break and just fail anyway. So that's been stripped out. Now I'll show you the display, show what's actually going on here. I'll turn it on. So this error OL, this always comes up when I turn this one on. Now my other Datron, my, my ones I've fixed previously, it doesn't do this. So I need to look into this and think there's some kind of fault going on here. Um, as you can see, you've got the plus minus and the going off here. I've got the lighting here as well, so lighting up quite brightly, and you can still see it's an anti so it's brilliant, so that's working nicely. We've got a bit like mini volts, there we go, mini volts are showing up. AC mini volts, that's showing up there as well, it's all readable. Let's do standard AC. Yep, yeah, that's all looking nice. So, in kilo ohms, it's showing up. Standard ohm symbol, mega ohms jumps up to this one. It's all looking fine. This is really readable. It's looking really good. My lighting is drowning out a little bit for the camera, so um, that doesn't help. But I'm really happy with these enunciators now. That's brilliant. I've got a, a system figured out which works really well. I'm really happy with it. So I'm going to stick with that. Really good. I'm really happy with it. The other issue I've got, so even though I've got a shunt in here, shorting it out, and it's on two wire. You see I've got these readings jumping over the place. It's got a lot of noise in here. So I was actually hoping that Doing the power supply section in the back would solve that. It hasn't. But that's not that unsurprising. So it's doing it on the resistance range. It's jumping over the place. I do four wire. It's no better. Just chip the switch on the back. So this is the front rear input switch. No real change. So it doesn't matter what range I'm on. AC is doing it around as well. This is giving a reading as well, which shouldn't be giving. And so DC is also floating around a little bit as well. So there's also some kind of digital noise there, something going on where it's not clean. Now I may need to go through and reseat all the chips or something like that. I, I really don't know. That may be necessary. I haven't reseated any digital chips. Any of these chips, I've not any of those. The only ones I've reseated so far have been on the digital display board is the only one I've reseated chips on. Nothing else has been done. So it could be chips need reseating on this board or this one, which is why it's jumping around. But there's capacitors on this board which will need changing. They always do, they're always bad, I'm going to change them and we'll see what happens then. So this board here is the analog board which basically is the heart of the unit. All the other boards which feed into it, this is what does all the calculations and stuff. Voltage references are over here, that sort of stuff. Very important board. It's got all these little op amps and, and optocouplers and stuff all around here. So interestingly you have things like these MCT6 devices here, they've got different grades. We can't see it too well here but one's got a green dot, one's got an orange dot on it. There's some other ones over here as well, which is up here, green dots. You've got some 16136s here, which got white dots on them. Uh, they've got like, uh, I can't remember what it's called now. There's a, there's a rating for them anyway, but they are selected. So these are the capacitors here I'm talking about, right here. All these electrolytics down here. All of these, I've already tested them, and they're all test bad. Unsurprising, every Datron I've worked on so far, all of these caps have been bad. So I'm going to pull this board out, replace all those caps. I've had a quick look around for tantalums which look burnt or discoloring on it. I can't see any bad tantalums. This one here is looking very slightly off. Don't even see it on camera, it looks slightly darker. Whether that's a clue to what's going on, I don't know. Could just be shadows, might be nothing at all. Mostly it uses tantalums and tantalums are right as long as you don't expose them to much ripple. They'll last for ages. If they have a high ripple current, then yeah, they're not going to like it. That's the critical thing to make sure you do some power supplies. If your power supplies go bad, then you can actually blow the tantalums out. It's like a, a tantalum failure is usually a symptom of a fault, not the cause of a fault. Except usually, anyway. Let's replace these. And I'll see if that changes anything with the display. It's been about a month now since I touched this thing last. Now, what I've actually got up to was I had two capacitors I'd left to replace, which I've done. I've replaced those two caps in here now. So that's all the caps done on this board. Power supplies have been recapped. So basically, everything's been recapped. Yeah, well, I have tantalums I don't tend to do, unless they're obviously bad or I'm suspicious about them, then I'll leave the tantalums alone. But I only do electrolytics, basically, as a matter of course, because this is a consumable item as far as I'm concerned. So the issue I had then was that the display was very erratic. So let's just power this up, and I shall show you what it's doing. 
So right now it's fine. If I put on one volt and I go down to one volt scale, it's not looking too bad now. So the issue I had was it's very glitchy, it's very erratic, it's jumping over the place. And it was, it was like really noisy kind of readings. And all I actually did to solve this, I just went around and reseated all of the chips. So all the chips on this digital board will be reseated apart from the RAM, right? Because if you reseat the RAM and you cause a power loss, you can lose your calibration settings. But because I wanted to try and maintain the calibration this thing came with, so I can use it as a comparison for everything else I've got. If it's accurate, that's been calibrated since 2005. Alright, so it hasn't been calibrated for 15, 16 years, basically. 15 and a half years hasn't been calibrated for, so it's going to be a bit out. But out of interest, it's just nice to know what it actually is. So as you can see, I've only just turned the thing on and it's settling. That's now nice and stable. That's looking fine. So the two issues I had basically was power supply problems, the display and the noisy readings and I seem to have solved them all so it looks like it's basically working now. If I check that auto ranging, we'll just go through some of the ranges on this thing. See 100 millivolts. That looks all right, looks reasonable. Don't forget it's all warming up still. So it's no, not gonna be perfect. If we go up to uh, 10 volts and we're getting 10 volts. As you can see, calibrations are slightly out. This is accurate basically down to the last digit, right? Within reasons. The last digit's not perfect because of the um, 20 bit DAC, but it's it's kind of there, it's, you know, plus or minus a little bit. So, yeah, you change your microvolts. Anyway, this doesn't read that low anyway. So, that last digit there should basically be correct as this one. That right? should be very similar, and they're not. So, this does need calibrating. I know I, I expected that, but it's not too far off really, considering. Modes seem okay. If I take this off and do a self test, we'll see what happens. Error 7. So, that is one thing I've got to look into is this error 7. I remember now. So, I hadn't actually completely solved everything. Error 7, I don't know what it is, I'm going to have to go and look it up. But that seems to be the last remaining error. Otherwise, it's okay. Alright, so I need to go and look that up and see what's going on there. Just to uh, solve that particular problem. But it seems to be basically working. Well, it's basically working on DC at least. I know DC is definitely working. I haven't compared it to other gear. I haven't done AC inputs. I haven't done resistance inputs, stuff like that. I haven't done any of those things yet. So there could still be some issues going on there. But if the DC is working 100% right, that's a good sign that other things are probably going to be basically all right. But who knows? It could be anything that's wrong. But I need to check into Era 7 first. Okay, so the Era 7, that comes back to being the AC board, which is playing up. So I need to basically test the AC circuitry. I can do that. All right, so I'm currently injecting a 100 millivolt, 500 hertz signal, or thereabouts, my calibrator's not calibrated. So it's just outputting you know, voltages, whatever. So it's at least reading 100 millivolts, and that's one of the self-tests is supposed to be doing. So that's the uh, one volt, which is supposed to be the next self-test is supposed to do. It. So let's go to one volt at 500 hertz, and we're getting one volt. So the AC is actually working, and those are the voltages that measure that. So for self-test, maybe it's just out of calibration so far that it's making it think it's wrong. Let's just do 10 volts. There we go, 10 volts AC. That looks fine. 100 volts. Yep, yeah, that's fine. So it's a bit of a mystery right now. It looks like it's working. So let's go a bit higher. Let's go 500. There you go, 500 volts AC. That also looks like it's fine. So AC board is basically working. So it could just be a calibration issue where it's too far out and that's making you think there's a failure, so it might be a case of just going through doing a recalibration of it and it'll sort that out. That's what I'm hoping anyway. So what I'll do now is I'll test the resistance ranges. So I've just plugged this two wire lead, it's only two wire, into my calibrator that's on the other side of the room there. It's got some, I've got a bunch of these daisy chained together, so it's not going to be great, but it will just give you an indication of if it's working or not. So it's currently auto ranging, so it's currently open circuit, let's do a short. There we go, it's doing a short. So what I actually might do is take this filter off because that's slung it down. Don't need the resolution for this. 
just to do basic testing and shove the arms guard in there. Just why not? Okay, so I've got sort of massive lead resistance I've got in here showing basically alone. Alright, so not too worried about that. Let's step up through them. So one ohm, yep. Yeah. Ten ohms, hundred ohms, one K, ten K, hundred K, that's looking pretty good. One meg. This is where you start to get noise to get these high resistances, they, um, they do tend to pick up more electrical noise. So that's one meg, this is 10 meg. Okay, so that's looking like it's basically working too. So that's good. So I think this is basically fixed. Basically, we'll see there's a bit of jarring around, but I mean, it's probably because of the resistances. Let's go to obviously 10k. We'll chuck this back on here again. And what are we getting? 10.0006 and that agrees with my calibrator. My calibrator says 10.00063. Considering I've got these long leads on there too, that's actually pretty close. That's good. That's like the resistance range, at least on that one, is looking pretty good. That's excellent. So this is basically fixed, I think. I, I think I'm going to call the video quits now. I'm going to cut it off here and say this is done. If there's anything else comes up, I'll leave it at that. What I will be doing though is the EPROMs on here, are, these aren't online, these values. So it's the 290056 slash A20. This is 8th of July 87. And 290057 slash A20. And 290113 slash A20. These EPROMs aren't online, and it's not that I've found. So I'm going to read these EPROMs and I'll put them somewhere and share them around, make them available to people if, if you need these EPROMs. At least there's a copy somewhere right now, there isn't one that I can find. And I'll do the same thing for the EPROM on the GPIB board as well, IEEE interface. I think that one was out there though, but these ones don't seem to be, because these are the 2732 versions. The 27C32 are the EPROMs on here, not the 2532s, which is an earlier unit. So this is a later version, so a bit more important I think these are out there. Okay, so that's looking good. So don't forget to click like and subscribe and give the bell icon a bit of a push as well if you've not been here before and you need notifications so you know when I'm posting new videos. I've got another one of these to fix yet and I've also got a Datron calibrated fix which is, I've just tried it out just before I started doing this video and that is a mess. Um, the only thing that's working is the output for the resistance ranges. So that's all it's doing is output resistance, that's it, that's what works. DC works to a point, but it's, it's all completely wrong. It's just that everything doesn't work. So that's great, because it means it's going to be a nice repair series. That'd be a good one to get into. Catch you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.